um, well, I hope the round tables, um, you had some interesting conversations. Um, this is just the, the, um, the last bit of the day. Um, just to give you a bit of uh, an update on what's going on with the EU data protection legislation to really uh, rock the afternoon. Um, but it, it's such an important part of what's going on in our industry that uh, I think it's a, um, I wanted to give you a bit of an update what's what's going on. Um, so most of you will know that in the EU they're trying to get a common understanding across all countries that we have the same data legislation. And what they want to do is they want to change it to opt in for all channels. Now at the moment if you're mailing a catalogue people only need to opt out of receiving that catalogue. Um, they need to opt in to receive emails but um, opt-in for all channels is what the EU would like everybody to move to. If a consumer doesn't actually want you to have any information, at the moment they can say, please flag me and don't mail me again. And we all do that. But apparently the EU want us to be now erasing all record of that person. So how you'll ever know never to mail them again if their name pops up, we don't know. But they want you to be able to erase on demand. Um, if you're profiling, the consumer has to specifically consent to the fact that their information is going to be profiled. Again, not sure how that's going to um, be translated. If you're going to be sharing the information with a third party to help you work out a strategy, then that will need permission. If a consumer wants to understand what information you hold on them, they need to get free access. At the moment, actually, if, um, if they do want to know what's it, what information you hold on them, most people give that information, it's just you can charge a £10 admin fee, but it will have to be free going forward. And the EU want to be quite draconian about fines, um, because once there's been a bedding in period, um, they are going to make sure that this is truly enforced, according to what they're saying right now, and there'll be some quite serious fines for data breaches. <laughs> so how does this differ from what's going on now? Um, well, at the moment, the law is a directive. And what that means is um, the, the law can be interpreted by each country in the way that they see fit for their particular country. But the proposal will be a regulation. We'll all have to follow it to the letter of the law. There'll be no interpretation um, and that is it. <coughs> as far as consent is concerned at the moment, we can opt people out for postal mailings, um, but it will be opt-in for all media. Uh, at the moment, if we want to profile, we don't need any additional permissioning, but there might be additional permissioning. They call it explicit consent, but nobody really has actually defined exactly what explicit consent means. We'll have to see how that pans out. Um, if people want access to their data at the moment, you can charge a £10 fee. It will have to be free going forward. And as I said before, um, we can at the moment flag do not contact, but then next, um, if the law comes in, it'll have to be completely erased. So, you know, there's, there's quite big changes afoot, um, but we, people have been talking about it for a couple of years now, and it keeps getting pushed and pushed and pushed, as, as Robert well knows. Um, so, you know, it, it, it is quite scary what, what might happen, um, but I thought I'd give you an update of what, where, where we are and what the politicians are doing right now. So there are actually three parties that are involved in this process. There's the European Parliament, there's the European Commission, these are all European bureaucrats, and then there's the Council of Justice and Home Affairs Ministers. Now these are people that represent each country um, and they come together uh, to actually represent their country's business interests. So the idea is that all three parties will come together in the autumn to negotiate and the three-party discussion is called a trilogue. Each party has their own test, text version of the regulation. So the um, items that I've outlined to you are the most draconian, but actually the Home Affairs Ministers want something that's a much, much softer than that. And so they have a different text. They still haven't quite worked out what their text looks like, um, but the, um, they're, they're planning to get that all sorted and then the all goes according to plan, the trilogue will come to an agreement by the end of 2014, early 2014, and there'll be a two-year grace period to implement it. So uh, on the 12th of March, the European Parliament, so one-third of the, um, the group, actually said, right, we have decided on our text, and it is the less business-friendly business version, it's the most draconian version. 
Um, and this is set in stone. They've now decided that that's a text that they're going to go for. But the Council of Ministers are still working out what they would like. Um, and they're pushing for something that's much more business friendly. And they're still meeting, and they're going to carry on meeting till the end of June to actually decide what their text is. John Barrowman is a person that's representing the UK, um, and he's made it very clear that he wants to strike a balance between the needs of the UK industry and the consumer. Um, so he really is on our side. Uh, apparently there is still opportunity for lobbying if anybody feels very passionate about it to provide John some information that can help him with his cause. A lot of lobbying has done or been done already through the DMA but we can give you access to um, James Milligan at the DMA who has got um, John Barrowman's ear. And I think um, Alex Pratt actually um, has um, very high contact as well. So uh, if anybody wants to talk to Alex he can help us too. The timetable may change. Um, there's elections going on in May in the, in, in, for European Parliament. There's going to be new European commissioners, including a new person for data protection. So nobody really knows what influence that's going to have on the trial-off decision. So, so we'll see. So that's what's going on, but it's pu been pushed and pushed and pushed. So what, what can we do in the meantime? Well, the DMA and the ICO recommend that make data a priority don't try and change anything dramatically right now just make sure that data is at the heart of your business and you understand what data you have make sure you're compliant with existing regulations so make sure that if you're mailing a customer make sure they've had the opportunity to opt out if you're emailing them make sure they've had an opportunity to opt in just do the very best you can as far as best practice is concerned as far as legislation is concerned at the moment don't necessarily change to the opt-in process, but think about how you would do it should it come through, um, so that you've got a plan. And be ready for data breach notifications. So um, if somebody does come to you and says, you know, what data do you hold on me, or a, um, a bureaucrat comes and says, what, what information do you hold, that you can lay your hands on it. Um, so that, that's really the advice at the moment is, you know, don't, don't make any dramatic changes, just do what is right now um, as, as um, the DMA and, and through, through the regulations as they exist now.